Hello, this is the section 7.1 lesson. In this section, we're going to talk about the meanings of ratios, rates, and proportions. To start off with, let's define the word ratio. A ratio is a description of a relationship between two quantities. So the important words here are relationship and two quantities. So any time that we've got some scenario where we've got two different quantities involved, we might be able to describe it with a ratio. So to illustrate this, uh, uh, this definition, let's look at this example. A muffin recipe calls for seven cups of flour and two cups of milk. So notice that we've got two quantities involved here, the seven cups of flour and then the two cups of milk. And they are related. So we're going to be able to describe these with a ratio. So let's talk about three different ways that we could describe this ratio. Uh, first way is describe it in words. We could say that the ratio of flour to milk is 7 to 2. So here we use that word 2 to indicate a ratio. Uh, we could also describe it with a colon. Uh, the ratio of flour to milk is 7 colon 2. That colon there means the same thing as the word 2. And then third, we could describe it with a fraction by saying that the ratio of flour to milk is 7 over 2. So here we've got a fraction that describes that ratio. Now later on we'll talk about the relationship between ratios and fractions, but right now we're just using this fraction as another notation to describe a ratio. So let's, uh, let's play around with this example a little more. Suppose that we want to make more than one batch of muffins. How much flour and milk do we need? Now, this is a fairly simple problem, and you could probably solve it very easily in your head, but let's look at a tool that we can use uh, to work with ratios, and that tool is called a ratio table. And so in a ratio table, we're going to form just a, a table with three rows. Uh, the first row is going to contain the total number of batches we make. Uh, the second is the number of cups of flour, and the third is the cups of milk. And so let's start off with putting the information that was given in the problem. So to make one batch of muffins, we needed seven cups of flour and two cups of milk. Okay. Now suppose that we wanted to make two batches of muffins. Well, if we're going to make two batches, then we're going to need twice as much flour. So we're going to need 14 cups of flour. And likewise, we need twice as much milk. So we need four cups of milk. And uh, so what this illustrates is that to go from one column of this ratio table to another, we're going to multiply by some number. Specifically here, we multiplied by 2. Now suppose we wanted to make uh, 5 batches of muffins. And so to go from this first column to this third column, we need to say what 1 times what number will equal 5? Well, we need to multiply by 5. And so we need to multiply every number in this column by 5 to get the corresponding numbers in this third column. So 7 times 5 is 35, 2 times 5 is 10. <clears throat> and so that's how many cups of flour and milk we would need if we wanted to make 5 batches. Uh, now suppose that we wanted to make just a half of a batch. Well, to go from that first column to this uh, fourth column, we would need to multiply by 1 half. And so 7 times a half is, well, we'll just write it as 7 halves, 7 halves. Or we could write that as 3.5. 2 times a half is 1. And uh, so if we wanted to make a half a batch, we would need 7 half cups of flour and 1 cup of milk. Or in general, if we wanted to make n batches of, of, of muffins, to go from this first column to this last column, we would need to multiply by n. And so we need 7 times n, and we'll just write that as 7 times n. And then here we would need 2 times n. So in general, go from one column to another column of ratio table, we multiply by some number. Okay. So let's illustrate how we could use this idea. Uh, let's go back to this, uh, to this original ratio of uh, 7 cups of flour to 2 cups of milk. And suppose that we have 8 cups of milk. Uh, how much uh, flour will we need? So we have eight cups of milk. So that means that we no longer have two in this, uh, uh, in this, um, in this last row. We're going to have eight. So I ask myself, how can I go from two to eight? Well, we're going to multiply by four. 
So that means I need to multiply all these other numbers in the first column by 4. 7 times 4 is 28, and 1 times 4 is 4. And so if I have 8 cups of milk, I'm going to need 28 cups of flour. And so there's my answer, 28 cups. Another uh, variation of this example, suppose now we have 5 cups of milk. So we want to get a 5 in this bottom row. And to go from a 2 to a 5, well, there's no whole number that we can multiply 2 by to get 5. So let's do a little trick. Let's don't put a 5 in this bottom row. Let's put a 1 in this bottom row. Now, why would I go to a 1? Well, to go from 2 to 1, that's pretty easy. We just multiply by a half. And so we need to take 7 times a half to get 7 halves. Sorry, that's a 7. And then 1 times a half to get a half. Now, I want to get a 5 here, and so to go from 1 to a 5, we can just multiply by 5. And so five, uh, 7 halves times 5, that's going to be 35 halves, and then 1 half times 5 is going to be 5 halves. And so right here is my answer. My answer is that I'm going to need 35 halves, which is equal to 17.5 cups. Of, of flour. And so we see that we didn't solve this problem in one step like we did the previous problem. We put in this intermediate step. We uh, so-called went through one. We put in this column containing a one and then we went from that one to five. So we broke it up into two steps rather than uh, just one big step involving a, a fraction. This is a technique that we'll talk more about in, in, in the next section. Now let's make an observation here. Let's go back to this uh, first ratio table that we made up. And uh, notice that here in this first column we have this original ratio of 7 cups of flour to 2 cups of milk. And then right here in this second column we have this other ratio of 14 to 4. And so those ratios are really the same ratios. And so we say that these ratios are equivalent. The ratio is a 7 to 2 and 14 to 4 are equivalent. What that means in a practical sense is that batches made with these ratios will taste the same. Uh, if we made one batch with 7 cups of flour and 2 cups of milk and then another batch with 14 and, and 4, those batches of muffins are going to taste the same. And so we say that those ratios are equivalent. Okay. Now this equation, 7 to 2 equals 14 to 4, is called a proportion. Uh, so a proportion is an equation describing equivalent ratios. This may be a slightly a different way than we typically use the word proportion, but here's kind of a mathematical definition of a proportion. It's an equation that describes equivalent ratios. We'll talk more about proportions in a couple of sections. So let's talk about some different ways that we could describe equivalent ratios. One way is with a ratio table, as we have been doing. Another way is with pictures. And uh, so here we could draw a simple picture of these different ratios. Um, here each one of these boxes in this picture is going to equal one cup. And so we see here that we've got seven boxes for the flour and then two boxes for the milk. And so we've got here this ratio of seven to two. Now over here, if we count all these out, we see that we're going to have 14 boxes of flour and then, two, and then excuse me, four boxes for the milk. And um, so here that picture illustrates that ratio of, of 14 to 4. And so this illustrates that this ratio of 7 to 2 equals this ratio of 14 to 4. So that's another way of describing equivalent ratios. A third way of describing equivalent ratios is what's, what's called a double number line. In a double number line, we're going to draw two number lines, one for the amount of flour and then one for the amount of milk. And then each one of these tick marks is going to describe a different quantity of flour uh, and milk. So we're going to start over here with zeros on the left. So if I use zero cups of flour, I'd use zero cups of milk. Uh, now in my original ratio, we said that we're going to use seven cups of flour to two cups of milk. So seven cups of flour goes with two cups of milk. So this distance right here between these two horizontal or vertical lines represents seven cups of flour and that same distance represents two cups of milk. 
And so if we uh, go over the same distance to the next tick mark, uh, that distance we'd go, we'd have 14 cups of flour, and then we'd have 4 cups of milk. So we simply added 7 and then added 2 down here. Okay. So now if we want to go to the next tick mark, we'd add 2 down here and add 7 up here. And so we'd have 21 and 6. And then go to the next tick mark, we'd add 2 down here to get 8. And then add 7 up here to get 28. So there's another way of describing uh, equivalent ratios. All these ratios are equivalent. 7 to 2, 14 to 4, 21 to 6, 20 to 28 to, to 8. And we could keep going if we wanted. Okay. Now let's apply this idea of a, number, of a double number line to an example. Uh, suppose you drive 5 miles in 15 minutes. How far will you drive in one hour? It's a fairly simple problem. Let's look at how we can solve this with, uh, with a double number line. Okay. And so notice that we've got two different quantities involved here. We've got 5 miles and 15 minutes. And these quantities are obviously related, so we would say that the ratio of miles to minutes is, is 5 to 15. Now let's make an observation about this. Notice that the quantity, that the, these quantities have different units. Uh, this quantity of 5 has a unit of miles, and this quantity of 15 has a unit of minutes. And this is a little bit different than our previous example, where both of our quantities were in cups, so they had the same units. And so we've got a scenario like this where we have different units. This ratio is what we call a rate. So a rate is really just a special type of ratio. So let's try to solve this with a double number line. And uh, so I have a number line here for miles and a number line for minutes. And so let's put zero here on the left. And then we have five miles and 15 minutes. And so this distance here represents 15 minutes and uh, 5 miles. Okay. So now let's go over the same distance and draw another vertical line. And so we're going to add 5 on the top to get 10. And we're going to add 15 on the bottom to get 30. And then let's draw, go over the same distance, draw another vertical line. We're going to add 5 on the top to get 15. Add 15 on the bottom to get 45. And then we'll go over one more time that same distance. We're going to add 5 on the top to get 20. We're going to add 15 on the bottom to get 60. And uh, so, there we go. What this illustrates, this last one, is that 60 miles is going to correspond to 20 minutes. Or, state another way, in 20 minutes we're going to go 60, um, excuse me, in, in, in 60 minutes we're going to go 20 miles. And so there's the answer to my problem. How far will we drive in one hour? One hour is the same as 60 minutes. We're going to be able to drive 20 miles. Let's look at a slight variation of this problem and use a double number line to solve it. So again, we drive 5 miles in 15 minutes. But now the question is, how long would it take you to drive one mile? Well, let's use a double number line here. And uh, we're going to have uh, 0 here on the left. Now we're going to kind of um, zoom in on this original first interval uh, where we're going to go f uh, 0 miles up to 5 miles and then 0 minutes up to 15 minutes. So here's that original ratio or rate of 5 to 15. Okay. Now instead of going to the right, we're going to take this interval and divide it up into smaller sections. And so we have five miles across the top, so let's divide this number line up into five equal pieces by drawing four vertical lines. Two, three, four. Okay. Now, we divide this up into five equal sections, so that means that um, this first tick mark is going to correspond to one mile, and then two miles, and then three miles, and then four miles. And so if we've divided this bottom up into five equal pieces, this first tick mark is going to represent three minutes. And then we're going to have six minutes, and then nine minutes, and then 12 minutes. And uh, so this illustrates, for instance, that in, in uh, six minutes, we're going to be able to go two miles. In 12 minutes, we're going to be able to go four miles. And uh, in three minutes, we're going to be able to go one mile. And so that right there is the answer to my question. How long, 
How long would it take you to drive one mile? Well, in one mile, it's going to take us three minutes. So right there's my answer.